Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Let's just jump into it right away, man. March 16th. You're back in action. Fight night, Las Vegas. Danny Silva making his debut, UFC debut. How do you feel about uh, Danny Silva in the matchup? Man, he's a, he's a tough kid. He's a, he's a scrapper. Uh, he comes from a good, uh, good team uh, under Cub Swanson. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a tough individual and, uh, yeah, he's a scrapper, like I said, and, uh, I'm super excited to fight someone like him. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it looks like, you know, he's, he's a striker. Any similarities to, to Melsic? Um, no, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel anything in regards to stylistically them two are the same. I think, uh, Danny's more of a volume slash, you know, kind of pressure fighter where Melsic will sort of snipe you from the outside and uh yeah take his time and, and beat you up you know very precisely where I feel Danny's uh more of a volume volume guy who likes to you know throw hands and just put the pressure on you and just make- so uh uh yeah uh, with Danny man um yeah he's an interesting character man not many fights you know uh so you only can really look at the contender series fight that he had with Angel Pacheco. What do you yep. think of that fight? Man, what a fight. What a fight, man. If that was in front of a crowd, the crowd would have loved that. That's a that was a very, very exciting fight. Um props to both of them. Them them two put it all on the line and, and just we just scrapping from the beginning. Uh props to um what's his name? Pache- P- Pacheco. Pacheco. Yeah, Pacheco. Yeah, man. He 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 took a beating bro and, and gave as good as he got. So uh, props to him, but um, yeah, Danny looked really good in that fight. He 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 put the pressure on and landed early and and put his foot down and and dominated and showed who was the the big dog in the cage straight away and and sort of let him know. So yeah, that was an amazing fight, man. Honestly, that that, that was a, a really really good fight. Yeah, definitely a, a great fight, man. It was so great that Dana gave both those guys contracts. And they need it. Them two, them two put on a show. Them two, them two knew what was on the line, and uh, they knew that they they had to go out there and show out. You know, so they did exactly that. They they and, and it always it always with fights like that. It always takes two to tango. You know, if one dude kind of you know breaks a little bit, and it becomes a finish. So it doesn't become a, a sort of fight that goes like that. So props to both of those guys. Uh, you know, my hat goes off to 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 both of them. Yeah, you're right. It takes two to tango because. You know, sometimes you'll see guys that fight and you'll have like a fight of the year contender and then in their next fight, it'd be boring. You know yeah. I mean? Like it didn't play out at, at all like what you expected. You only remember yeah. the last fight of him just going crazy. Um, yeah. Have you ever had that experience where you went in and you're like, this dude is going to scrap and then you ended up just playing the technical battle? Um, no, not that I could think of, to be honest. Um, probably Melsic was, was one that I thought that maybe we, we could have exchanged a bit more but it just panned out the way it panned out um also with uh Lerone, i thought maybe me and Lerone would have uh me and Lerone would have just you know kind of bit down more and 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 scrap a bit more but he obviously uh felt he uh had something in the grappling and, and he took it there and you know props to him as well for 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 changing it up and not just making it a you know uh a one di- one dimensional fight how did that impact you that 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 fight and how that fight played out and now your approach to upcoming fights <clears throat> um man like uh no excuses for 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 that Lauren did what he had to do props to him much respect to the guy the guys are the guys are really really uh you know fierce competitor and he's 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 uh he's, he's a tough dude as well um man i just i i went in there physically like the best shape you know and uh just my mind wasn't there, you know. Again, I'm not making any excuse, but I felt physically like I was in tip-top condition. I trained super hard for that. But if your your mind isn't isn't there, then I feel like that's that's a majority of the thing. Like it, 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 you could be physically so fit and ready to go, but when it's time to pull the trigger, you're you're not there. You're not present. You know what I mean? Where I felt with my um, my fight with Choi, I felt, you know, probably one of the worst camps that I've ever had in terms of preparation and injuries and whatnot going into it, plus the weight cut. 
Uh, but then I, I went out there and, and I, I performed because I was present. I was in the moment, you know what I mean? Where vice versa with Lerone, I was physically in the best shape, no injuries, felt good, easiest weight cut of my life, but just was not there present and not there mentally. So, yeah. Yeah, I was there for the Choi fight in Singapore, man. That was an insane fight. I remember people next to me were like, man, that, that Filipino dude is like, He's better than I thought. That's what someone said next to me. It's good. It's good. I like that. I like that guys. Uh, they look at me and they're like, oh, fucking don't expect too much from him. But then, uh, you know, I get to wow him a little bit, which is uh, always a nice thing. So this game, man, we, you know, they always say it. It's a game of inches. And, but also it's a game of optics, right? Like what the judges see, you know, like when, when, when you rewatch that fight, what optics did you not like? Man, I, I, I don't know what it was. But I was just so eager, just so eager to, to, to put my hands on him. Like, in my mind, I just expected him to, to be there. And, and me and him were just going to go for it for three rounds or until someone, you know, there was a little chink in the armor. And it, it didn't play out that way. It, play, it, it, it uh, how do I put it? It felt, it, it didn't feel like I was fighting. It felt like we were sparring and he was just doing the game plan better. You know, it felt like we were sparring, like a hard spar, getting ready for a fight. It felt like that. It didn't feel like as if like there was, there was like that intent, you know, when just someone's trying to take your head off, you, you get that feel of like, oh, he's got like that intent of like trying to actually hurt you. Where in that fight, I felt everything was calculated from his part. And me, I was just licking my lips, trying to like, you know, come on, let's, let's get this thing going. Let's get this thing going. And yet it, it, it didn't happen that way. And, you know, down the track, I ended up getting, I ended up getting, you know, completely lost. I just, I, I just felt, yeah, lost in there. And just, yeah, just, I don't know what it was, man. I don't know what it was. So probably it just felt like it was, it was just a hard spot and I just couldn't, yeah, I couldn't switch into the game plan, you know. Switch, like make make the make the right calls and make the the adjustments mid round or even in between rounds. So, yeah, learning lessons, man. That's 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 what it's all about too, as well. You know, I mean, improving upon those. Uh, and you know, three fifteen minutes of a high level action, dude. Like you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of a lot out of that, right? Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Um. um you took a trip to Southern Florida. What's the connection there? Like, I, I didn't ever expect that. Um, so my boy, uh, Martin Yuen, shout out <laughs> the situation. Um, yeah, he, uh, he, he's been, uh, he's been on my case and hey? like whenever he's been down there, he's always, you know, he's always been busting my balls to say, come on, come down. You know, all the boys are, are here waiting for you and, and Henry's waiting for you. And, you know, Luke A. Vicente is here waiting with you. Gilbert's here. Come on, come down. Let's train. And, and I just thought to myself, man, like when, when will I ever get a chance to like really go over there? And I just thought to myself, since I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from fighting and just enjoying being a dad for a little bit, I was like, why not? So went over there and just, you know, see, see what it was like to, to train in the States and uh, yeah, to see, see what it was like there. And also just to, yeah, to, to, to get away and, 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 you know, sort of use it as like a, as a, as a working trip, as a, as a trip as a vacation for the family, but also like as a, a, a trip to sort of broaden my horizons, I'd say. For sure. And how was it getting uh, to work with uh, Henry Hoof, you know, and seeing, you know, the different, I guess, viewpoints? Man, the, the, the thing is, is that like, uh, there's no, again, there's no s secret sauce. There's no special anything. It's, it's, we all cook with water, you know, we're all doing the same things. We all, it's just like obviously like little details here and there, and again, um, they're saying is 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 keep it simple, you know. And it's true; it goes through with everything, through grappling, through wrestling, everything is. You keep the basics there, and you you know you become you get so good at the basics that everything else is just you know easy. Everything else is easy, so basics are just there. So it was good just to just to sort of you know see on the other side of the pond, also just because. You know how they always make it out that like, oh, to be a world champion, you have to be from Brazil or you have to go to America to tra train at these mega camps um, or you have to go to Thailand to go train at these mega camps as well. And obviously that's not the case, but I just wanted to see for myself what, what it was like, how, how, these, uh, how these gyms 
uh, have their routine set out or how they, you know, how they structure classes. And, and it was just good to, again, to see, to see on the other side of the pond what, what it was like. Any other spots that you, you trained at besides Kilcliffe? No, it was just Kilcliffe. I just went the, to, to Miami just to train at Kilcliffe. We did a little bit of traveling to New York, but we didn't, we didn't get to train over there. You know, I would have liked to train at the Henzo's while we were there, but didn't have enough time. But yeah, just mostly, mostly Kilcliffe in Miami. So when you get back to Australia, that's when they announced the fight coming up? Or did they announce it while you were on vacation? Um, when I got back, when I got back, okay. that, like as soon as I got back, I was like already sort of thinking like, man, my hands are getting itchy. I thought, to be honest, I thought I was going to, I was going to sit out a bit longer, but obviously the, the competitor in me wanted to come out and, and compete um, and fight. You know, I'm a fighter. I, I've, I feel like I'm just getting into, into my prime where, you know, the athleticism and the experience and the knowledge, they're all sort of hitting at the right time you know so i feel like i need to get the ball rolling you know we, i can't be a fighter forever you know it's, uh, and i can't be fighting at the highest level you know father time catches up with everyone so i need to to get the ball rolling get these fights going and uh prove that i'm i'm, I'm one of the best so so the camp it's the same cast and group. yeah 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 still still the same still the same squad you know um again I don't just because of a loss or, or something goes downhill for me. I don't switch up. Uh, I still, you know, it was working before, but we, we obviously got to sit back and, and figure out what was going on. Well, why I was, why I was the way I was in the last one, but uh, nah, uh, same camp, same training, still put my head down and, and bust my ass off. So yeah. What's your expectations in this fight? Man, I expect uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, nice to think but I, I i'm getting comfortable with knowing that this one's gonna be bloody and like a lot of pain involved in this one and going both sides i'm not just expecting to run over this kid i know this kid's tough um but i'm expecting it to be a hard fight and i'm training like it's a hard fight and um yeah i'm, I'm just busting my ass off man putting my head down you know and i'm just eliminating all distractions around me and i just really yeah, just again, I just want to put my head down and and just you know eliminate all distractions and and get to work and fight. And I'm super excited to fight uh, a kid like Danny Silva. Like I said, he's a he's a tough individual and he comes to scrap and he comes from a good school. So very excited. That mentality of being comfortable hurting yourself to hurt someone else. Yeah, how important is that? Um, I feel like uh, going through. Uh, my career, I've always, uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, I've always gone into fights thinking that I would just walk away, not hurt and be pretty and, you know, be able to smash these guys, run over these guys. You know, I still have obviously that same intent to do that, to run over these guys and, and make it a quick night's work with no injuries. But I'm also comfortable knowing that, you know, if we have to dig deep, you know, that I got the biggest shovel and I'm, 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 I'm willing to dig, you know what I mean? And, uh, I know he does. I know he's willing to. So I know I am, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there, you know, pushing the pace and, and trying to get him out of there. But I know when it comes push to shove that I'm going to meet him head on. And I'm not, I'm not the guy that's just going to back up and let you take it, you know. So, you know, I'm there busting my ass every day to, 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 to be in shape and, and get, go after this guy likewise, which I expect from him. So, yeah, super excited. And, again, getting, getting comfortable knowing that I'm going to, being a war like that's that's about it is this the first card you and uh ty are on together uh yeah yeah me and bam bam first time yeah man it's criminal that they have it at the apex that's criminal <laughs> yeah like, i was actually thinking about that i was thinking about i was like man you're gonna get a guy like bam bam who's such a a crowd entertainer you know yeah. And to be honest, this card is pretty stacked for an Apex card. Yeah, yeah. This card is pretty stacked for Apex cards. So I, was, I was just thinking to myself, man, I guess they, they, man, they have to get rid of it though. They have to get rid of the Apex. And they, I just feel like the fans lose out on this. You know, look, to be honest, I don't mind fighting in the Apex as long as I get paid. I don't mind. But I feel the fans are missing out on some of these cracker fights. So. Yeah, they're missing out on the shoeies because I know you want to do one. <laughs> 
bad. I do. I do. I was speaking. I was speaking to Bam Bam. It's actually his birthday that weekend, so he was saying oh. that like we're after we smash our opponents and we can go out and we can go, we can let loose yeah. a little bit. So yeah. Nice, nice. So, uh, hey, any rumors of a, a Sydney card later this year? You've heard anything? Yeah, I've heard some stuff. I don't know about Sydney, but there's definitely a card coming to uh, Australia. I, I'm too not too sure where it's going to be, but uh, I think it's going to be sometime uh, summertime for Americans here. Wait, no, wait, yes, sometime sometime mid year. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so that's all I've heard. So, okay, okay, yeah. Um, hey, did you did you catch the fight uh, this, oh, last weekend? <laughs> Between Ortega and, and Rodriguez, what an insane turn of events, right? In that one, <laughs> Ortega <laughs> jumping yeah. up and down and hurting himself—that's crazy. That is yeah. crazy. And then him uh, still pulling out the victory the way he did. Man, Yair looked good. Yair looked oh. good, but uh, yeah, for, props to Ortega, man. He just powered through all of that and just was like, "No, nah, I'm not giving up." Just kept going forward, put the pressure on, and yeah, got to him. Yeah, man, I think everybody underestimated Ortega at that fight. I picked Yair yeah, to win. Uh, yeah, well, I feel because everyone everyone sees Yair yeah, fighting and Ortega hasn't fought in so long. So everyone's like, oh, Yair's yeah, the man because he's been fighting. And I guess people forget, you know, obviously recency bias. You know, people see someone so often winning and fighting and then people forget, like, what they've done and, you know, so... Yeah, you got to remind them. Hey, March 16th, you get to remind them once again in Las Vegas, man. Fight night. Gosh, you know what it is. You know how it is. You know how it works. You know what I mean? That's, that's just a fight game. Thank you, man, always for the taking the time. And, uh, yeah, man, all the best in the rest of the camp and, and as well as the fight. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother.